it's me again here I am back working on the charger honestly I haven't stopped working on the charger um, it was just the only pause I did take is to set up my media blast cabinet because um, that's an important part of this whole process of restoring a car and uh, I mean even if you're not even restoring a car if you just want to you know have a cabinet you take one door part media blast those parts paint them and put them back on the car that works too you don't have to go all in like we are with this car um, and truthfully if this car had decent floorboards I would have put floorboards in it and drove it you know it's there's a lot to be said about that that famous mantra David Freiberger always says don't get it right just get it running there's a lot of value in that statement um, and a car that runs is obviously way better than a car that doesn't so and the only reason this car isn't running is because I don't have my transmission yet and I'm starting to lose patience um, I think I know I've mentioned who it's coming from but I'm I'm starting to, to I don't know if the word is be concerned but I'm starting to get a little irritated because the guy's not uh, communicating with me it just ghosts me so it kind of sucks but I know they're busy it is what it is I'll get it eventually I just don't want to piss someone off and then have them build my transmission so it's kind of a, a delicate situation but anyway so that was my rant here's what I'm going to show you today so this is how we do things as far as restoring small parts so I've mentioned I've done a ton of powder coating for all like the the decent sized parts the sheet metal uh, rock guards, splash guards, access panels, all that stuff is all is all uh, powder coated. But the little stuff like the screws, the tiny brackets, stuff that I would be afraid that the powder coating shop would probably lose, I, I'm going to do it myself and I'm going to show you that process today. So take it, use it by all means. Um, I'm not the first guy that's done this, but I'm just going to, I'm very, I'm doing this to, to document my car. So if, if, if someone wants to buy this car at some other point, these videos will be up on YouTube documenting um, how this car was built. And that goes a long way in, in for someone that's going to plunk down their hard earned cash to buy a car. Most cars that you buy are a mystery. They're, or their past is a mystery. All you can do is, you know, if the car was born in the, in the early 90s, all you can really rely on is Carfax. So, um, or, or the original owner, you know, so and most of the time the guys know where to be around. So, um, so this is not only just, it's helping you guys understand how we operate here, but it's, it's also documentation and, and I believe there's a lot of value in that. So <clears throat> stay with me. So here, as you guys know, we, we tag and bag everything, um, that we took off this car. Um, most importantly, because of our unfamiliarity with this particular vehicle. Um, but this method works for us and us as in me Let's bag up and so these are dirty parts these were taken off the car and put in a bag and put in a in a tote like that so what I do is I dump them out first so it gets all the particulates out of the bag and then I put the bag aside and I leave it empty right there so I will take the two parts and if I'm missing a part out of this set, say one of these little C-clips were missing, I would write C-clip on the bag or, or minus one C-clip. So when I see the bag, I will order it or put it on a list of stuff to order. So, so pick this stuff up and drop it in here. That's why I bought this tray, because I like to actually work in this tray rather than over here. Um, and so when I'm clean, or each as I clean each part, I move it over to here. So I know, because it gets a little, uh, gets dusty in here and cloudy and even with the vacuum going. So, all right, so let me, let me wipe this. Now this is all kind of standard stuff, but it shows you the process. And that's, again, why I do it. You have to do this. You have to do this every time, unless you do a real small batch or something. Always got to wipe your. And there's a protective layer on this screen as well. Got to turn the vacuum on.
80 psi of pneumatic pressure to feed this gun and that's what the manual said was ideal <clears throat> it seems to work really well yourself why is he cleaning these ancient 55 year old parts well the truth is is these parts are much better quality than what is available today in the aftermarket so I have saved every single fastener that could be saved from this car <clears throat> and have gone to the extent of restoring it really Every single nut and bolt that, that was still good has been or will be restored on this car. Only because of the quality is just terrible of these same parts. The simplest screws, the simplest bolts that you buy in the aftermarket, not only for a lot more than they cost brand new, or I'm sorry, original, if you were to go to the dealer back in say 70 and buy these same part the same hardware. It would have been peanuts compared to what they charge today and you're getting a subpar uh, fastener so save especially if it's mopar i mean i'd say for gm ford and mopar anything that came with the truck is going to be far superior to what what's available today and not now i'm not saying better than aircraft quality or even a grade 8 fastener but most of this stuff is identifiable by experts if you were to I'm not doing a full OEM restoration here but uh, I'm doing it as, as good as I possibly can within reason I mean why wouldn't I I guess they call it sympathetic restoration yeah this aluminum oxide is is really really good and it's becoming evident why it was so expensive because it works really well now I have not tried anything else with it yet some commenters have said oh glass beads uh, walnut shells this and that but honestly I have very li limited uh, experience with these machines I've always done it the old school way or the noise is gone <clears throat> see there's like very little cloud in here because of the vacuum but that is 55 year old fastener right there and it looks amazing not only are the threads cleaned out but but the whole entire thing is completely cleaned and I'll show you what I put on them to preserve them I always try to, I always try to pick, pick this stuff up by the threads because I'm not going to be concentrating on putting paint on the threads as much as I would be on the head of the bolt. And I do do a real light layer just so it doesn't become an issue with fitment like wrenches and stuff like that. Because that's, that's a thing. If you, if you put too much paint on the head of the fastener, it's, it's not going to fit very well. blow off each one otherwise you're just taking your iron oxide or aluminum oxide away so there's that and so so on and so forth I get this is my dirty side this is my clean side so now that I've got these guys here I move them over to my paint bench the way we restore hardware or I I should say um, is you know you saw the sandblaster how well that thing works and you know this is a treat for me because I've honestly never built a car with this many components or this much hardware I'm used to pick up trucks and you know blazers don't even have nearly this much but um, this car has got a lot of little screws and brackets and stuff so hence why I bought the the media blaster it's been long overdue um, you guys have heard me talk about that too much now so um, but what the way we paint hardware it's not an exact science but this is just how I do it and I've used 
every single rattle can out there over the years and nothing really seems to hold up so um, a couple years ago I tried this ceramic you know like engine paint stuff you paint engine blocks with and it is not only they have a pretty darn close color to like raw cast or raw metal um, they it's got ceramic in it so it tends to last long as long as you don't overspray it I do always thin coats and um, and then the, the tool will still fit. It, I mean, it's a real thin line. You gotta, you gotta be real careful. Um, I'm not sponsored by them, but it's the, the Dupla something brand, engine enamel. Um, give it a shot, pick out your color. It's pretty cool. Works, works well for me. It's the next best thing to powder coating, anything with ceramic in it. Um, and then I also use that V something T brand. Um, it's, a, it's a flat, but it's also ceramic. So it tends to work with little screws and um, tiny little bolts and you know most of my hardware so I want all my hardware to match as close to original as possible so I went over and over and found you know tested different stuff and so this is what I'm doing all my black hardware in so I just basically make a layout here I know this seems very rudimentary but it works for me and then I I will write down like before it's painted I will write down what bag these groups of screws go to mental right you have to you have to keep track otherwise you don't know where it goes especially you know not familiar with the brand and all um, and then you take a picture of it with your phone or GoPro and then you you know spray it but meanwhile the bags are all for all that hardware is stocked up here so that's just my way of trying to be organized um, here's my um, oh, I'm sorry here's my k-frame bolts they are good to go I had them in a different color I didn't like it so I changed it so nothing, nothing big, just flat black ceramic. Works. It's as close as I can get, you know, it, to my knowledge, as far as you know the right color. So it's it's always seemed to be a chalky black flat on the hardware. So anyway, I've got a lot of stuff to do. This is my um, this is all bare. These two rows, all bare hardware that needs to be painted. This is all hardware that needs to be painted. Or I'm sorry, that has been painted. And this is stuff I gotta put back in bags after I let it cure for 24 hours. It's it's madness, it really is. And uh, I, I appreciate you guys watching, I, I do. The car's gonna come out good. I, um, you know, I'm just doing my best over here. So, uh, that should be about it for this one. I, I promise the next one will be more exciting, but building chargers takes a while, turns out.